Man, this year was all doom and gloom, with lots going on with World War II, Germany would take France, Battle of Britain, but it wasn't all gloom. There was a big section of the Pennsylvania Turnpike that was open, making the Pennsylvania Turnpike the first controlled access highway. The year is 1940, and this Studebaker Commander sedan was on offer at your local Studebaker showroom. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. Did you ever just want to know more? about cars that are off the beaten path and not talked about classic car hobby is way more than mustang camaro firebird we cover the classics vintage some exotics lots of orphan cars and cars that are frankly being forgotten we talk history specs and design of these rolling works of art if that sounds like a channel nay if that sounds like a community that you will totally dig subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video before diving in deep on this one, this is our 324th episode so far, and I'm only saying that because the channel has grown a lot recently. There's also playlists, like we have a 30s playlist, 40s, 50s, all the way up until today. We don't cover that many appliance cars, but just saying we did cover a few. We also have a playlist of just the orphan cars that has 112 videos of just orphan cars. Be sure to check it out. 1940 Studebaker model lineup. You had the champion in the basement riding a wheelbase of 110 inches, commander riding a wheelbase of 116 and a half inches, and then president sat at the top riding a wheelbase of 122 inches. Studebaker offered the commander from 1927 to 1942, stopped auto production because of a little thing called World War II, then picked back up in 47 and was on offer until 1966. The commander replaced the Studebaker Special 6. 1940 Studebaker Commander was designed by Raymond Lowy. 1940 was more or less a carryover body design that started back in 1939. So let's compare 38 on top. But before we do, did you ever notice how similar the 38 Studebaker looks to say, uh, maybe a Chrysler Royal? Very interesting. Anyway, 38 on top, 40 on the bottom, starting in the front. I personally love the styling of the 40. Funny story. So I saw this 40 at a local car show out in Beaver, Pennsylvania. This past Sunday, there was probably at least a thousand cars there, probably maybe more. Completely free event. I saw this car pull in from way far away, and I was like, no way. Anyway, 37 Studebaker on top, 40 on the bottom. Starting in the front, everything is completely different. Grill is on the nose of the car on the 38 versus the front fascia of the 40. Boppers are completely different. Headlight placements are different as well as different locations. Headlights are mounted to the hood on the 38 versus inside the fenders on the 40. Wheel covers are different as well as the front fenders. Look at how the windshield is designed on both. Possibly the same, moving to the side profile. But before we do, check this out. So both of these cars were labeled 38 Commanders. Look at these headlights and then look at these headlights. I don't know if those headlights are really hard to find. Maybe they break. Maybe that's why this one looked like this. But it's supposed to actually look like this. Anyway, side profile. Just pretend there is a top of the 38. Side shot and four door wasn't available. Hey, it happens from time to time. Anyway, look at the side profile. Very similar, if not the same. Bottom pictured car should have running boards. 38 has a gas filler neck versus 40 has a gas filler that is behind a door. Looking at the rear, different designs, different rear quarter windows. Rear fenders also look different. Single rear window on the 40 versus a split window on the 38. Also, the trunks are different. Tail lights and rear bumpers are also different. Moving inside to take a gander at the dash and the interior, two completely different designs. Which one do you like better in the comment section below? Let's talk specs, 202 inches long, 75 inches wide, 57 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 116 and a half inches. It weighs 3,180 pounds. Price, $965, which is equivalent to you spending $21,030.73 in the year 2023. Total 1940 Studebaker production was 107,185 units. 
And that number included champion, commander, and president. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer, 226.2 cubic inch displacement, flathead six, 3.7 liters. It's good for 90 horsepower, 3,400 RPM, an estimated 188 pound-feet of torque at 1,500 RPM with a bore of 3 and 5 16 inches and a stroke of 4 and 3 8 inches. Compression is 6 to 1. Let's talk Studebaker chassis. The brakes, it used 11-inch drums both in front and rear. The ignition system was distributor and coil. Suspension, the front suspension used transverse leaf springs. The rear suspension used semi-elliptical leaf springs. Steering gear was cam and twin lever. Just wow, look at everything that is going on with this design. Look at the headlight hoods. This almost looks like a baseball cap. That's pretty cool. Look at how these bezels all the way down here with the running lights at the bottom it's a very cool headlight design it's got this center line here that continues back but before we check that out just look at this grill and bumper situation bumpers there with these nice bumperettes and overriders with the, the connecting bars look at how everything's all pinstriped I love how this looks like a butterfly. Also, look at how these come off the top of the hood. Just look at how thick those are. I guess you could call those wings for a lack of a better term. There's the center line on the fender itself. Notice it gets more pronounced as it comes towards the back. Beautiful running boards here. Here's my foot for reference. We're a size 12 shoe. Beautiful S badge here, stamped inside the running board. And that's how far, that's how much it tapers back into the body when it comes back to the back. So just look at this bright work, door handles. Gas filler door is on the passenger side. Just look how it's designed. Also, there's this center line that comes off the rear fender. It comes down into these nice petite lights. And then out the back. Here's what the rear bumper looks like. Notice the bumper back here doesn't have the overriders like it did in the front. Soft tip. Owner was saying that this is a light and it lights up so that at night you can see where your fender is so you don't so you don't bump into anything. This one also has curb feelers, the front and the rear, so you can feel the curb so you don't curb your wheels, which is a really cool feature. Coming up and getting inside, but before we do, just check out how these door handles are designed. Cabinet doors. Just look at this door, look at how it's all framed out. Also look at how this piece overhangs. Just notice the door isn't straight, it curves, this goes down. This feels like a broadcloth material, carpet on the bottom, armrest door handle to pull the door shut, window crank for the big window, and door handle to get out. This car does have vent windows, and just look at how they're designed. Take a look at this interior. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, you have the high beam switch, clutch, brake, gas pedal. Look at how flat this floor is. Handbrake right there. Here's what over the hood impression looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. Underneath the steering wheel, there is tons of room underneath the steering wheel. And I only show this because if you're the same size as me, 
you don't really want the steering wheel to be riding in your crotch. It's not a very fun position to be in driving. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right. Amp meter, gasoline gauge, speedometer with odometer inside of it. Notice it's a square speedometer. Oil pressure, coolant temperature, starter button, then the key. Air vent for fresh air, heater, defrost, and clock. Up above, there are sun visors. Now, look at how big they are. They're pretty big. Nice rear view mirror here in the center. Another sun visor over there ashtray here in the center on to the glove box test here's our test subject here is my hand for reference here is the glove box in question look at that glove box it's absolutely massive fits in there no issue at all there's enough room to put another camera in there if you wanted to but just look at all of the safety stuff that's pretty cool and it shuts. Getting in the rear. Just look at this door. It's just like the front one, only it's in the back. It doesn't have an armrest. Door handle to get out. Window crank for the big window. This is what the back seat looks like. Look at all the space you have. It doesn't have an armrest on the door panel, but it does have an armrest here. And there's also an ashtray built into the armrest, which is a really cool feature. Here's what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio. And here's what visibility looks like out the rear. Notice it's a split rear window. It does have a parcel shelf back here as well as dome light in the center. But that is the only dome light. There isn't one in the actual center of the car. An armrest, yes, armrest handle to hold on to these windows do open they slide open how cool is that got tons of knee room the seat profile is rather upright it doesn't dip down in the back the bench is probably about the right size for the bench back here but it's not a bad seating position all things considered because you got tons of knee room and you can put your feet out on this footrest. Look at how flat the floor is. So just check out that inline flathead six, oil bath air cleaner with downdraft carburetor off to the side here. That engine sits way down inside there. Owner just told me that you could take these off though to make it easier to work on. Just look how far this radiator sits back. And there's the nose. Outside the box oil filtration. Look at the steering column and how it comes down. Battery box, six volt. Coil is right there in the center of the firewall. On the positive side, great looking overlooked car with tons of space both in front and rear hood release located inside. Great over the hood view as well as visibility out of the front. Huge trunk, easy to load stuff in because of the load floor height against it. Studebaker made three wheelbases and three different engines. The Commander is in the middle. It's sort of the middle child and information it's out there, but these can be really hard to get information for. And I'm not just saying that as some whiny millennial as some commenter said yesterday. I'm just making it aware that the information on the 1940 Studebaker Commander is a little bit hard to find. Engine sits low inside the engine bay. Even though you can take the sides off, that's just another step to do to work on this car. Anyway, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1940 Willis, or some people call it Willys, Aero Coupe, or 1940 Studebaker Commander Coupe, or 1940 Ford Coupe. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario, would you rather have a 1938 Studebaker Commander or a 1940 Studebaker Commander 
or a 1941 Studebaker Commander. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and song title correctly in the comment section is the key word. We'll have their comment pinned to the top of it. That one might be a dead giveaway, but it's definitely a summer song. Anyway, thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. Don't have Facebook and would like to talk to me? One-on-one, -on -one, send me an email. All of that will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. Oh yeah, and engine episode Wednesday is gonna get pushed back to Thursday. I'm gonna have a video about what's going on this August is going to be crazy, but we're going to get back to the 430 schedule after August, I promise. Anyway, thank you all so much for all the support, and until next time, toodaloo!